the way that the property that the Pilgrim Church came to them was that a Muslim man donated the property along the road specifically because there were houses of prostitution there. He had planned to cut a tree down near where the church building is today. And he brought a man with the chainsaw to the tree. He was not able to let the man cut the tree down because he said, my children are going to be taught under this tree. It has changed its whole trajectory. It is now a place for believers to come. It's a, a school for children. It's uh, a place for beekeepers to come to market their honey. They make what they need to, to do beekeeping and then they have a place to process it. Blessed Bee for Life became the only industry in the whole region. There's no other factories. There's no other manufacturing business of any type in this region. Some of the people in the church work for the beekeeping industry there. So there's a machine there at Blessed Bee for Life that helps separate the honey from the wax. And then they get their, they get their revenue from the amount of, of honey and wax that they sell. It's a secondary source of their income because all they have to live on is the food that they produce through agriculture. When I went there in 2003, we began to introduce modern beekeeping because their beekeeping was primitive. I took a whole new view of this trip and I was led by the Lord to supply 60 beekeepers that were planned. A bee suit, a smoker, and a top bar hive. So there was a parade that took place through the Yumbi town and uh, all of us marched with them like <laughs> never before in my life. The ministry in Uganda impacted my life in the most major way that I could have imagined. That's because God knew my time, my talent, and my treasure. And he had already prepared me through the other work that I was doing here in Eugene. I think if there's one thing I could share, it would be an invitation for each person to just pause for a minute to thank God for what he has given them in who they are as a person. And just say, God, I'm open for you to show me how, where, and when you'd like me to participate. No matter how you want to share your particular uh, God-given ability, it would be welcome there in some particular way to the community at whole. When I think of partnership, I think of relationships. And we have a profound opportunity to have a relationship with a sister church in Uganda. As we contemplate how we can share love, grace, hospitality with someone else, I think it will energize us and that we will see the world in a different way. We care about the people in our church. We care about the people in our community. But we also need to care about the people in the world, and develop relationships with those who may not live in our own community. When I think about everything I've heard about Uganda, and I think about the potential for ministry, I can see ways in which we can partner with people there, in which we can share our lives with one another. I encourage you and invite you to contemplate how you can be involved with our new partnership in Uganda and with our sister church, Pilgrim Church. Thank you.